Welcome to the Mental Toughness Academy. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer. I have two teenage boys myself that play sports, so I get it how hard parental involvement is in youth sports. It requires a lot of balance between cheerleading them on and keeping your mouth shut, right? Because none of us wants to be perceived as those overbearing parents in sports. Being a sports parent can be a tough job. Mike, he coaches his 13-year-old daughter, Beth's soccer team, three nights a week. He always feels unsure as to how her mood will be on the way home. It tends to set the tone for the rest of the family and the rest of the night. Sometimes Beth is totally excited about how she played, and other times she sulks. A lot of times because of a negative comment from one of her teammates. Since Mike has a hard time reading her mood sometimes and understanding what goes on inside a 13-year-old girl's mind, he typically uses the car ride home to point out what Beth could have done better to improve her play. Now, he doesn't want to be one of those parents pushing their kids in sports, but he does want to help her improve. Beth, on the other hand, doesn't want to talk about her hurt feelings and is afraid to say anything that might disappoint her dad. Beth's mom, Jill, can usually tell right away if something is wrong, and she does her best to comfort her daughter while juggling dinner, the dishes, the laundry, and getting everything ready for the next day. She can feel her daughter's hurt and sees the tears in her eyes, but just doesn't seem to be able to come up with the magical words that'll make it all better as she sends her off to bed at night. Her brother, Jason, comes home from practice, throws his backpack on the ground, and without saying hi to anyone, asks, What's for dinner? Jill, acutely aware of her children's mood, says, Chicken, what happened at practice today, Jason? Mike's ears also perk up as he listens to Jason complain about his coach again. He had taken his dad's advice and asked the coach for a short meeting before practice so he could ask what it would take for him to get more playing time and what he'll need to do to get his game to the next level. And he was totally frustrated by the coach's vague advice. You got to focus more, work harder, and find your swagger out there on the field. (laughs) Jason was now angry and frustrated with his dad because he felt like that advice got him nowhere and now he doesn't know what to do. So does any of this sound familiar in a sports family? Has this type of drama gone on inside your household? Most parents in youth sports give me a resounding yes to those questions. You know, we all want the best for our kids, and we want them to be happy and successful. And sometimes it is the system that parents bump up against. You know, there's some great coaches out there, and a lot of times they're coaches that mean well, but don't have a clue how to help kids deal with the emotional side of their sports participation. Now, most of us encourage our kids to play sports to learn focus, confidence, how to be a team player, how to overcome adversity, develop that never-give-up attitude. The list goes on and on, right? Now, sometime in your child's playing career, they will encounter a coach who says or does something that could have a tremendous impact on your kid, good or bad. Unfortunately, a lot of young athletes think that their coaches are gods, and what they say is always the truth. This can be really damaging if the feedback is negative. In our trainings, we help kids get perspective on their coaches and parents. And you should do the same. Even if they have great coaches, sports parents need to understand a lot of young athletes get their validation as a worthwhile person from performing well. And they base their personal value on whether they win or lose. This can be devastating when they lose, and if they don't learn early on that this is not true. What you need to do as parents is to always refer them back to the reasons they started playing in the beginning. Help help them focus on the fun, the skill development aspects of the sport, and simply just for the challenge of loving and mastering and improving and help them let go of all that pressure to win stuff. Remember, they have to want it for themselves. In fact, they have to want it more than you want it. The most you can do is provide encouragement. Now, here's some guidelines for sports parents to avoid parental pressure in sports. One, before a child agrees to play a sport, have them sit down and make a list of what that entails. The length of the season, weekend games, practices, packing their own bag, etc. Two, when a child needs to be disciplined, don't take away a practice or a game as a punishment. It isn't fair to the team. Three, commit to not being one of those parents pushing their kids in sports. 
So the motivation comes from within them, right? Four, use setbacks as teaching moments and share some of your woe to win stories to help them get there. Make up those stories if you have to. Don't leave these teachable moments to the coaches. Don't worry if you don't have all the answers. Your primary job as a parent involved in kids' sports is to provide them with a safe place to land when they fall or when things get tough. Our goal at the Mental Toughness Academy is to support sports parents in supporting their kids to be the best athletes as well as happy, well-adjusted kids who feel ready to take on the world. I'm Craig Sigal. That's our mission. Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.